Today's cardinal lesson is about qualified charitable distributions, and that's a mouthful, or QCDs. And you say, what in the world is that? And why are we talking about it? I mean, the first thing I want to do with this is get over to the why. Like, if giving money to a specific charity or a cause or is not important to you, or it doesn't float your boat, then you can just move on to a different presentation. Because I'm going to show you the tax efficient way and the tax benefits to give money directly from your IRA. You get a big tax benefit from it. But in the end, is if you're not interested in the charity getting the money, then this isn't going to mean a lot. Because you're not getting the money out of this deal. The charity is. So, you know, what that means to me is a lot of people that are clients of ours use this system to give more money to the church or certainly give the same money, which might have been a lot, and they're just moving it to the QCD variable. So that's, that's the first point I want everybody to grab on is, is if you're for the charity and you're for the cause of the charity and you get a spiritual benefit out of that or something in terms of your legacy, and it's really in line with something you want to do, and we're getting a big yippee out of that, then you're really going to like QCDs if you got money in an IRA. Now, another why with this is that when you turn age 72, you need to give, you need to make required minimum distributions or RMDs. People that are at this age or older, they know what RMDs are. It's the money that the IRS regulations make you take out of your IRA and pay taxes every year. It's a minimum amount. And this is a way to get around the taxes on the RMD. It will lower your taxable estate. If you have a very large estate and it's going to be taxable or possibly taxable, is reducing the size of your IRA over time that it's a smaller amount when you die, and then you could then give that to charity, it's going to reduce your taxable estate. And then the other places is for people of more moderate income that use the standard deduction, this is a way to effectively get a tax deduction for charitable contributions when in fact you're using the standard deduction on your tax return. So I think it's real important with QCDs, before we get into the rules and then the hows, just to talk about the why, and we've done that. So when we get to the rules, so it's very specific. You mess one of these things up, you're gonna, it's going to be deemed a distribution, not a QCD or a qualified charitable distribution, and you're going to end up paying taxes on the money. So it's very important that people get all these rules. And I'm not going over these for you to memorize these so much because, you know, I know these rules. I do the QCDs for a lot of my clients. Just we do it in the beginning of the year and we decide how much it's going to be. We look at the effect on their taxes, on the size of their IRA. And then I handle all the, you know, if you want to call it paperwork, it's electronic now. But first rule is you need to be 70 and a half or older. So I'm sure that some of you that are watching, you're 65, and you say, well, this doesn't have anything to do with me for five years. Well, it could, and the way it could is if we're going to do a financial plan for you, we're going to look at the whole of your retirement. We're also going to look at your charitable giving, and you're going to communicate that to me, how much you want to give or how much you want to give away, what kind of legacy you want to create. And if we know we can start these at 70 and a half, then we can just plan for charitable giving in the future. So this, this is relevant to everybody, people that are younger than that. But to actually do one in 2021, you need to be 70 and a half this year. And if your spouse is 70 and a half, but you're in your 60s, well, then we can just do the QCD this year out of their IRA and then wait till you get to be 70 and a half to do it out of yours. Now, it needs to come, a QCD needs to come from an IRA. It can't be from a 401k or a 403b or some other plan that looks and feels and acts like an IRA, but it's not an IRA. 
these only work out of IRAs. So if somebody is interested in doing QCDs, then what we're going to need to do first is take the money that's in your 401k and do a tax-free rollover custodian to custodian to an IRA, and then from the IRA we'll do the QCD each year. QCDs must be the first distribution of the tax year. So, like if you've already taken money out of your IRA and distributed it to yourself so far in 2021, you can't just all of a sudden, man, I learned about this QCD, we can't do one now because you've already missed out on this. This needs to be the first money coming out of the IRA in any given year. After this, you can take more money out so you want to make note of that. Now, if you haven't taken any money out of your IRA and you're 70 and a half, then we could think about doing one right for this year. Now, if you have several IRAs, what a lot of folks are not aware of is you get a different note from each of your IRAs that tells you what your required minimum distribution for that IRA is. And a lot of folks think that you need to take your RMD or your required minimum out of each IRA separately. And that's not the case. As you're able, we're able, and we do this for a lot of clients that have multiple IRAs, is we aggregate them all under that person and we can take the, the distribution out of just one of them. We can take the RMD, we can also do the QCD out of just one of the IRAs. And there could be investment reasons for doing that. Now, there's a maximum of $100,000 per year, per person, that you can do as a QCD. Now, that doesn't mean you can only give $100,000 to charity. I mean, frankly, most people don't have a real issue with this limit because they're going to give far greater. I have a client every year that puts about uh, $40,000 to $50,000 into a QCD where it goes directly to the church. We do help her for this every year in January, and she has about, uh, about a little over a million dollars in her IRA, and so she just basically donates her whole RMD, but she is considering going to the $100,000 level with the QCD because she gives far more than the forty dollars or $50,000 a year to the church. So we're, we're, we're thinking about shifting all of that to under the QCD because it really works out very well tax-wise. And then th the last point that I have up here, it's very important that these are handled in such a way that you've got the custodian of the IRA, which is going to be a bank or TD Ameritrade is who we use or Charles Schwab, whoever is has custody of the IRA, the IRA custodian, the money needs to go from them directly to the charity. It can't come through you. So you can't take the distribution and then give the money to the charity. You've just now violated one of the rules of QCD and you're going to end up paying taxes on that money. So it's important that it's handled correctly and then the 1099 at the end of the year, which the custodian knows how to do this, it needs to be marked properly, but we always check those. So, you know, the, the, the big point here is that there's a way when you reach a certain age, which is over 70, that from then on is you can give away up to $100,000 a year directly to a charity, never shows up on your tax return. And the charities obviously love this. And I'm, you know, I'm surprised more people don't do this because frankly, it's my experience that most people don't even know what this is. So I hope this has helped you today. I'm Hans Scheil, and I thank you very much for listening.